created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who by the light of the Holy Ghost has instructed the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Spirit to be truly wise, and ever to rejoice in his consolation, to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sorrowful in the Magdalene Heart of Mary, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Gregory the pray Seventh, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the great feast of the Ascension of our Lord into Heaven. And we just finished the High Mass and uh, now the Catechism where we cover the 4th, 5th and 6th Commandments. Remember the first three commandments deal directly with Almighty God. So here we enter the commandments that deal with our neighbor and ourselves. The highest of them all is honor given to father and mother. This is something of the natural law that children respect and honor their parents. We see this gravely lost in the modern world, even in their old age. Some stuff their parents in a nursing home, forget them there, and they, they're, 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 they're there to die in front of a TV commercial. That is the most, it's very cruel. But at the same time, there are many cruel parents who are aborting their children, who are contracepting the children that God wants to give, and they're blocking them, whether it be by artificial birth control, which is condemned by God's law and natural law, and also uh, NFP, which is not Catholic birth control. We'll come to this another day, but uh, natural family planning, which is basically contraception by calendar, which is stopping children, and it's, it's a disappointment to the parents, oh, if there's a child in spite of this. So NFP, be very clear, is, a, is an evil, and it's only tolerated in extreme certain cases, but it's an evil, and it, it has no place in Catholic homes. NFP is, uh, is wrong, it's, and the mentality is wrong. So, <clears throat> what is the fourth commandment? The fourth commandment says our holy catechism is honor thy father and mother. So, it's a twofold duty, the duty of parents to their children, and the parents should be worthy of the respect of their children. And St. Paul will say, Fathers, do not provoke your sons to anger. And uh, let the mother be diligent. So if the parents sin and leave an example of sin, and they're, not, they're negligent in their own duties, and they provoke their children to anger, and they give bad example, and they let sin in the house by bad movies, bad, by internet, unsupervised internet connection, and a uh, bad example between them by fighting and talking back and, and dishonesty, then they lose the respect of their children. Obviously the children still owe their parents honor and respect, but the parents, it's far easier if the parents uh, deserve it and, and earn it. So, uh, all true authority of superiors comes from God. This is based on the sound teaching of the sacred scriptures. All authority comes from God. So, parents must respect the laws of God and the church, and children have to see in their parents the, uh, the reflection of the light of God's authority and respect that. And that goes for subjects also to their legitimate superiors, and they must obey their just commands. Superiors, in turn, must exercise their authority in full conformity with the laws of nature and of God. So author all the authorities, such as presidents, such as leaders of nations, such as governors of states or cities, they have a duty to respect God's law. And also, the, uh, our superiors in the church, pope, bishops, priests, are supposed to respect God's law. But if they accept Vatican II and promote the new Mass, they have a right to our disobedience, says Archbishop Lefebvre. Why? Because the, new, the Vatican II has, is loaded with heresies that were already condemned by the Catholic Church many times over, such as religious liberty, ecumenism, freedom of conscience, <clears throat> 
uh, liberty of all religions, democracy within the church. These things have already long been condemned. Like Pope, Pope, Pope Pius VI, at the time of the French Revolution, condemned the Council of Pistoia, which was an appetizer to Vatican II. And it was condemned because it's loaded with democratic errors, loaded with uh, heresies. And Vatican II, we have to disobey our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all these popes of Vatican II. We have to. We either choose to, to follow Jesus Christ and all the teachings of his, his successors, or we follow these popes of Vatican II and the new church of Vatican II. We have to take our pick. We're going to be conciliar or Catholic. And to save our soul, we'd better be Catholic. Because outside the Catholic faith, outside the Catholic Church, there's no salvation. So, easy solution. Stay Catholic and stand up to these popes, bishops, priests, who are misleading many, many souls to hell. And so, honor thy father, says Exodus chapter 20. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thou mayest be long lived upon the land where the Lord thy God will, which the Lord thy God will give thee. So St. John Bosco used to love to quote this to the, to the children and to the youngsters. Obey your parents. You want to live a long life on earth? Well, obey your parents. You want to live a long and eternal life of happiness? Honor and obey your parents. What are we commanded by the fourth commandment? By the fourth commandment we are commanded to respect and love our parents, to obey them in all that is not sinful, and to help them when they are in need. So in their old age, um, happy are the parents who have had the children who will look after them in their old age. Many good parents who stopped children or aborted them in their younger years are left abandoned because they have no children, or because they were selfish with God and raised selfish children, they are abandoned by their own children. So it's kind of a built-in punishment, but again, God is merciful, and if they turn to God with a contrite heart, He will forgive them. But many times parents are punished for their selfishness with God by being abandoned by their children, and this does happen quite often especially in nursing homes, when they're just totally abandoned. We have to respect our parents and love our parents. What if our parents, as children grow up, in their adolescent years, they realize, hey, dad sins, dad is not always the superhero I thought he was, and mom has her mistakes and her flaws. Does that mean you lose uh, honor for them? No. That means, all right, they're human. You see their sins, you see their flaws, and this makes the fourth commandment even greater because you honor them because they're your father and mother, and God's authority is reflected through them. But if they command things against God's law, obviously God must come first, right? So we must respect our parents, and many, uh, many parents get in their heads today the, the ways of the modern world, that they have to be buddies with their children, they have to be, some parents even go so extreme as to say to their children, just call me by my first name, don't call me mom or dad. But this is ridiculous, because children need those pillars of mom and dad. They need them, both the parents on earth and the parents in heaven. So, um, parents they have to fulfill their authority and fulfill it before God and lovingly do so. And the respect due to parents is also respect due to grandparents and the children need to be taught respect to elders as well. When an elder comes in the room or visits the house, they stand up. This is something being lost. When they see a, a, a lady at the door, they open the door for them. And um, they respect their father. And uh, if, if, if the father has to correct them, they don't talk back. You just say, yeah, yeah, I'll try to do better. And if the father misjudged and he's accusing the son or daughter of something they didn't do, all right, well, listen to it. And then when he's calmed down, when dad has calmed down in his anger, go tell him and say, dad, this is how it really happened. It didn't happen this way. 
So it's very, very important to have this openness, but always honor towards our parents. And the rock and roll, the TV, the, the contemporary attitude is one of disgrace and no respect for parents, our elders. And this has to come back. The world might lose it, but we should never lose it as children of God. Children respect their parents. When they pay them due reverence, speak and act with proper deference, accept their corrections readily, seek their advice regarding important decisions, and bear with charity their parents' faults. So, many children think all is on their parents to show them respect and love and all this. But the children also owe their parents respect and love. So it goes both ways. And many children who are insolent, rude, talk back, and they wonder why their, their parents are always correcting them and always having to spank them, well, grow up a bit and realize, hey, it goes both ways. And many times parents will treat their children who respect them, they will respect their children. And St. John Bosco used to say this to his priests and his clerics in regard to the boys in the oratory. Treat the boys with respect, they will treat you with respect. Religion, kindness, and reason. Treat them also reasonably was his, one of his models. Children love their parents when they wish them well. Show them a spirit of gratitude. A spirit of gratitude. Be grateful to your parents. Thank your mother for the good meal. Thank your dad for the hard day's work. Try to polish your shoes at night. Try to be uh, helpful, especially the girls. The girls are being completely left in ignorance on the social virtues. When their father comes in the house, they should embrace him and welcome him home. They should have a, a meal hot and ready. The children should be taught respect for their father. And the, the girls should be happy to, to, to serve with the dishes, to serve and help mother prepare the meal and serve the meal. We have too many lazy fat cats. The American culture raises girls to be fat cats or skinny cats, but just lazy cats, house cats, who lay around, sit around, they don't know how to do dishes, they don't like to do dishes, they don't know what to cook, they don't even want to cook, they don't know how to cook toast even. I've seen high school girls, college girls, who don't even know how to prepare a meal. And that's a grave negligence on the parents, because they have to teach their girls to be girls. Now, um, when you receive a guest, the old way, the old-fashioned way, the old charitable way is when you receive a guest, you never let a guest leave your home hungry. And that's the, that's the girl's and the woman's domain. Her domain is primarily the kitchen and to prepare good meals. And the girls should know how to cook. They should know how to sew. And the modern world spits on this and wants the girls to be super athletes and even weightlifters and wrestlers. And it's disgraceful. This is not what God intended for the girls. Girls should have recreation fine. They should have fun times fine. But they should know how to be a girl and what pertains to their virtues. And the virtues of a girl is domestic. This is how God built it in the nature of things. And we have grave negligence in the modern world in all our families on this matter. And girls especially should love and know how to dress like a girl and not like a boy. Remember what God said is an abomination before me that girls or women dress in men's clothes and men's, men wear women's clothing. That is an abomination before me, says Almighty God. So it's so important for the parents to raise their children, for the girls to be girlish and feminine and have the talents what pertains to a home. And any young man who marries a girl, he's married, he knows he has a prize if she knows and loves how to cook and loves children and knows what to do with children because she grew up seeing her mom doing that. So it's very important that the mother sets the example. And it's really a, it's a, it's a shame and I, I, don't, I don't care what modern people think. 
It's a shame in God's eyes and even in men's eyes when a woman does not know how to cook or take care of a home. She needs to go back to school, back to homeschool, how to be a mother and how to be a woman. But our modern media, the TV shows, the programs, the music, trains and drills the girls to be men and masculine. And it, and it is revolting to men to see this. And you feminist liberals, you can say what you want. You destroy yourselves because you have no children. You're a dying breed, just like the homosexual perverts. They're a dying breed. But the happiest families I've ever seen are the mothers who take all the children God sends. They're happy to be at home. They, they, they're, they're busy as ever raising children. And they're happy doing so. And that's the way God built it. The modern world, as Pope Pius XI said, when he condemned communism in 1937, and don't be one of those evolutionary idiots who say, well, that's back then, this is now. No, human nature is the same always. A woman is a woman, a man is a man, from Adam and Eve to the end of the world. And we're too poisoned with this evolution idea that, oh, the, the women's dress has to change and modern dress has changed. No, a woman's nature is the same. And Pius XI condemned communism and he said one of the effects of communism is to rip the mother out of the home and make a man out of her. And that's what we, we Catholics have to reject this whole attitude. Even the Jewish women that we see in the airports, they're in a beautiful dress and they've got children. The Jews who don't even have the Catholic faith, who reject Christ, they have more of a sense of the natural law than many Catholics who've completely lost it. Completely lost it. And let me, while, while we're at this, I might as well add, Pope Pius XI spoke about women's dress. Pope Pius XI, and this is not, again, 30s fashions. It stays forever. And he says, basically, a woman's clothing needs to be five things. Not see-through material, not too tight. The dress should be half calf or lower. Half calf or lower. None of this mini skirt stuff. That's the dress of prostitutes. And, and we got girls coming to mass dressed in mini skirts. Coming to our schools, our tra well, traditional schools, in mini skirts. And the priests who tolerate this will have a lot to answer before Our Lady and uh, the Good God. And Pius XI was, was quite firm on this. And he also said, no short sleeves, and uh, what pertains to the neck should not go below two fingers horizontally, not vertically, horizontally below the neckline. And that's the way it is. Why? Because the, the girl's nature is beautiful, God made them beautiful, they're attractive to men, and they need to dress modestly. That's just the way it is. And poor, our poor American girls and the girls of the West are poisoned with, if they're not poisoned to be masculine and chewing tobacco and cussing like truckers, they are encouraged to be prostitutes. The most beautiful of them are encouraged to be loose and prostitute and dress immodestly. And it begins in the home. Now, many parents will come to us and say, Father, I've raised my girls this way. I didn't I warned them to stay modest. We taught them everything they need to be as a woman and a mother. But she's rebelling. Okay, well, St. Monica has St. Augustine. He rebelled too. He lost the faith, ran off with the world. But her prayers and her penances and her tears won him back. So God himself, the good God who created Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve had the best situation and they rebelled against God. So sometimes good parents have done all they could, then they really have, and God will bless them. And you wonder why, how come our child is so rebellious? And they, they spit against everything you've given them. And it breaks their hearts of, of these good parents. Well, these good parents are always their parents. So you need to pray for them, and you need to reach out to them, and let them know you love them, but you love them for their souls first. And many times after wild girls or wild boys get married or get hit by a close call to death, then they come back to sanity. 
and uh, come back to the heart of Jesus. And through your tears and conversion and prayers and penances, they convert back to the heart of our Lord. We should never give up. Children love their parents when they wish them well, show them a spirit of gratitude, try to please them and help them and pray for them. Children should obey the lawful commands of their parents as long as they live under the parental authority. Parents must not command their children to sin. Children must obey the laws of God rather than the commands of men, even if their parents, when such commands go against God's law, they must disobey their parents. So, if parents, you know, want you to work on Sunday and there's no serious reason to do so, you got to say, Mom and Dad, what about God's law? It comes first here. Children should ordinarily consult their parents about the choice of the state of life, but they are not strictly obliged to follow their advice. So, St. Jerome talks about parents who don't want their children to become priests or monks or nuns, and they'll put all obstacles. And St. Jerome says, if you've got those kind of parents, and your dad comes to the monastery or the seminary, and your father lays in front of the door saying, don't go, stay home, we need you, St. Jerome says, Dad, I love you, but step over your father and go do God's will. Who loves father, mother, brothers, sisters, lands more than me, Christ says, is not worthy to be my disciple. So, in the West, we usually don't have that problem. Actually, we have sometimes another problem where the parents so badly want a priest or a nun or a monk that they force their kids to a vocation, which sometimes the kids don't really have. You're going to be a priest. You're going to be a monk. You're going to be a nun. And the parents have no right to do that. They can encourage, and they should encourage, vocations. But never say, oh yeah, Johnny's oh, oh, such a good altar boy, he's going to be a priest. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's not God's will. But the parents should aim and still steer the hearts of the children to seek God's will. Like the Virgin Mary, this pure heart, be it done unto me according to thy will. Her whole will was perfectly conformed to God's will. And it was God's will she be married, and not one of the virgins of the temple, but married, but always virgin. And many saints were meant to be married. Saint Blessed Anna Maria Taigi, Saint Elizabeth of Portugal, Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, <clears throat> Queen Isabella the Catholic of Spain, but they were saints in, as, in their married life. So that's very important for parents to encourage them to seek God's will and do it, but not to force a vocation and not to force marriage either. If the children are not meant to be married but given to God, then they must respect that. And sometimes uh, being single is not really a vocation, but there are saints who were single. And if, if anyone is single life and they don't have a husband or a wife and they're older and they, they know they're not going to be married, they're not meant to be married and they don't have a vocation to monastery or religious life, what do you do? You still have to serve the common good by nursing, by teaching, by helping other families, by helping um, congregations or societies. So that's, that's the way it is. Parents must not command a son or daughter to marry. And we, okay, we just covered that. Well, let's move on because we have uh, a couple more commandments to cover in this one. <clears throat> Does the fourth commandment oblige us to respect and obey others besides our parents? Besides our parents, the fourth commandment obliges us to respect and obey all lawful superiors. So that includes bosses of business, uh, civil, legitimate civil authorities, such as mayors, governors, presidents, all ecclesiastical authorities over us, priests, bishops, superiors, cardinals, popes. And yes, these modernists are rotten. We pray for them. We have to oppose them. But we also have to respect them. And if, you, if I was to see... Pope Francis right here, or the Bishop of the Diocese, I would kneel down and kiss his ring, because he is the representative of Christ's authority. But then I would stand up and say, look, 
you're a modernist, you got to come back to the Catholic faith <laughs> and stop saying and promoting the new mass in Vatican II. So, um, what duty have parents towards their children and superiors, towards their, those under their care? Parents must provide for the spiritual and bodily welfare of their children. Superiors, according to their varying degrees of responsibility, must t care for those entrusted to them. So this, these things are kind of obvious. Here's some uh, great words from the Holy Ghost. Listen. Proverbs chapter 13. He that spares the rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him correcteth him betimes. So to spare the rod is, is uh, sending your children to hell. Ecclesiasticus chapter 7. Hast thou children? Instruct them, and bow down their necks from childhood in the way of obedience and humility. Ephesians chapter 6. Are you fathers? Do not provoke your children to anger, but rear them in the discipline and admonition of the Lord. And then elsewhere it says, the rod and the correction will save your child from hell. So here you have some insight by the Holy Ghost on disciplining children. One extreme is, it's like, it's like the wings on an airplane. The wings on an airplane. If there's, if there's only one wing, the plane is going to spin out and crash. So the two wings of raising children. On one side there has to be the, the love, the compassion, the encouragement and tenderness, right? On the other side must be discipline, correction, and admonition. And that includes spankings. <laughs> that includes the punishments that sometimes are necessary. Now, if there's only one wing, of, for example, of correction, uh, admonition, spankings, and there's no, it's not counterbalanced by love, compassion, and encouragement, you're going to spin out and crash. That's not the way to raise children. The Holy Ghost says both the rod, that is correction, Discipline, admonition, and spankings if needed. That's needed. But after the, he the wound, heal the wound by love, compassion, and encouragement, and correction. Right? It's very, you need both. Some, and, uh, if it's just love, compassion, and, and encouragement, but they need to be spanked, and they need to be corrected, and you don't correct that, you also fail in your duty. And this plane spins out and crashes. So a child raised without correction and discipline and, and, and admonition, they grow up to be spoiled brats. And children who have, uh, who have no correction and punishment, when they deserve it, obviously, um, they will also... Uh, the, the ones who only have correction severity will become bitter and rebellious. And the ones who are swamped in love, but no spankings and correction when they need it, they will be spoiled and proudful and arrogant. So you need both. And Saint Benedict, a very good advice to fathers of families. Read the rule of Saint Benedict in his, in his instruction to abbots. You'll find in there a wealth of wisdom. And how Saint Benedict wisely says, that uh, wayward monks need to be corrected, sometimes even corporally. And uh, monks who are wise, monks who are, have a good intelligence and a good will, they don't need to be spanked or even corporally corrected, but just spoken to. And that's how, when you have children, you've got to judge these things. And he also says very wisely, be careful in correcting some monks, lest in scraping off the rust and trying to correct this wayward child, you break the vessel. You break their trust. You break their love. The, 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 you, you just crush them by over-severity. Uh, 
be careful, says St. Benedict, lest in scraping off the rust you break the vessel. So there's so much wisdom in all this. A loving father must be wise, he must be correct, but he also must be loving and compassionate and understanding. It goes both ways. You need both to be a good father and also the mother. So both are needed. The rod and correction will save your child from hell, says the Proverbs. The rod of uh, the spanking and also correction. And in raising children, sometimes if you have a melancholic child who is prone to be very introspective, very sensitive, many times they don't even need a spanking. Just, just a, a stern look from the father will melt them to tears <laughs> and they will amend. So spankings are usually needed for the bouncy sanguines who, you know, once they're hit, all right, they cry and they learn and they, they carry on and they're laughing within five minutes. Those ones do better. So um, you need the guidance of the Holy Ghost, and especially at adolescence years. Um, you, to raise good adolescents, you got to start disciplining at age, at age, from the cradle. That's why Vladimir Lenin, the communist, said, give me a child by the time he's five, and he's mine. So, correction and all this starts from birth. And uh, raising the child's heart to, to what is good. So, let me just close with the fourth commandment. We're going to have to pick up the fifth and sixth commandment at another class, because time is quickly running by. But let me just close with some points on the fourth commandment. What are the duties of a, of a citizen towards his country? A citizen must love his country. Patria is father. All paternity comes from God, says St. Paul. Paternity is the root word, pat, pater, patria, is the root word for patriotism, the love of one's country. And it's Catholic to love your country because that's where your fathers plowed the field. That's where your fathers sweat and labored. That's where your fathers raised you and, the, and, and, and your family. And it's uh, where your relatives are and it's where your father is buried. And where many heroes of a good country have died to defend their country, for example. So patriotism is Catholic. But as Catholics, true patriotism doesn't blindly accept also what goes against the Catholic faith and against Jesus Christ. So these ideas of separation of church and state, condemned by common sense, by natural law, and by the church, they go against Christ. So we are truly patriotic citizens when we stand opposed to those false ideas. False ideas of liberty, false separation of church and state, false liberty of the press, false liberty of the internet, false liberty of any religion and any idea and any immorality. The true lover of the country firstly loves Christ the King and the, the Holy Catholic Church and its teaching of tradition. That's the only remedy also for our dying USA. To recover the United States, we have to have a Catholic United States. Uh, and Christ must reign with the Immaculate Heart of Mary. That's the only solution. Protestantism, so-called Christianity, is not the solution. The true Christianity is the solution, which is the Catholic Church, the Catholic teaching of tradition, not the conciliar heresies. So, uh, how... So that is, we must uh, pray for our lawful authorities, our president, for his conversion, and we must pray for our country to come back, to come to the Catholic faith. We have to pray for that. So, <clears throat> what are the chief duties of those who hold public office? The chief duties of those who hold public office are to be just to all in exercising their authority and to promote the general welfare. So, the public authority must render justice firstly to God. That's very important. So, the president owes to Jesus Christ adoration, thanksgiving, propitiation, and um, expiation. Give ear you that rule the people, and that please yourselves, 
in multitudes of nations. For power is given you by the Lord, and strength by the Most High, who will examine your works and search out your thoughts. What does the fourth commandment forbid? It forbids disrespect, unkindness, disobedience to our parents and lawful authorities, superiors. So, Cursed be he that honoreth not his father and mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. In other words, we agree. Let him be cursed who, who is disgraceful to his parents. Romans chapter 13, St. Paul, Render to all men whatever is their due, tribute to whom tribute is due, taxes to whom taxes are due, fear to whom fear is due, or respect, honor to whom honor is due. So, that concludes this catechism on the fourth commandment. That was a, a, lot, a large chunk. I don't want to go too long. But next time we'll pick up with the... The sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, destroyer of all heresies, pray for us. Saint Teresa, pray for us. Saint Anthony, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen.